Hello there, ghouls and gals. Welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla here at the Crash Hub, and today we are talking about, I'm so excited. I've been waiting to do this for a long time. We are talking about my top five shutter favorites for the month of June. Let's roll those credits. Hello again, my dudes. Welcome back to the Crash Hub. I am so excited to be back here doing my Shutter favorites. Shutter, if you don't know, it is a streaming platform for those who are totally into the horror genre. You have all kinds of foreign films, B movies. You also get some that are really well known, especially during Halloween season. Of course, you get different Halloweens. But the thing that makes this streaming service so unique is a platform for especially aspiring filmmakers and the horror genre that are able to come in and show their work and it's awesome I absolutely love it and they have curated playlists for you so if you're into the slashers they have a playlist just specific on that to where you can find films that cater to that slasher taste you also have a playlist for gore you have one for witchcraft even for like strong women badass murderers psychological thrillers, you name it. They have a curated playlist for anybody who's interested in horror. You just have to find the right one. And hey, it's a great way to like experiment and try out new things. So definitely check it out. You can go to shutter.com. You can subscribe. It's actually a very reasonable monthly subscription as well. And you get access to all of this. They are also in league with AMC. I believe AMC actually owns Shutter. So you also get AMC exclusives. Like right now they are showing interview with a vampire with a first season. I'm waiting for the second season <laughs> for when it comes out on Shutter. Now that you know where to go, let's talk about my top five picks for this month. All right, so I wanted to start with Stop Motion, which came out this year. And I absolutely love stop motion filmmaking. I think it's a really incredible art form. It's, it, it is so meticulous. It's very incredible how it is done. Um, I mean, if you look at Nightmare Before Christmas, for example, with Tim Burton, all stop animation and how fluid and smooth the movements are of those characters. It's incredible how many shots it takes just to make like like one little motion, right? And make it fluid. So I'm, I'm always impressed by stop animation. And so seeing that there is a film with this, that we have like a nice horror twist and, and kind of, you know, creepy and morbid, I'm all about it. So I was totally here for it anyways. So we have Ella Blake. She is a character who has recently lost her very overbearing mother. And Ella is a stop motion artist. And so kind of working through her own inner demons and stuff like that, she is wanting to make uh, a very spectacular piece, stop motion piece. But this to me becomes more of a psychological thriller because we've got her inner demons coming out and we also her, um, her creations come to life, if you will. So I definitely don't wanna spoil it for you, but it's, it's one for me that is really fun and the art form, just the art direction in general is really cool to watch. So I definitely highly recommend it to add it to your popcorn poppin' movie night list. I also found the film to be, it was a refreshing script for horror. Uh, so I thought that that was really fun. And again, the art was really great. The filmmaking was good and the use of practical effects. Man, anytime that we get practical effects, I am so here for it, okay? I can go on a rant about the use, about using practical effects and the necessity to use practical effects. So anytime we get that now in horror films, I'm just gonna like root and cheer <laughs> for people doing that. So they do a really fantastic job in this film with using practical effects. So the next film that I wanna talk about is Pie Walk It. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Am I? I don't know, you guys can comment below and like <laughs> do pronunciation for me if I'm totally messing that up. So with this one, it's very much this, this classic like angsty teenager that's just completely over her mom. And so what does she do? She delves into witchcraft and she conjures up the familiar and magical magicalness to help her basically murder her mom. Uh, and of course it doesn't exactly go um, 
as perfectly planned as always. So kind of just that like classic story. It is a little slow moving, but there are some really great moments. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. And to note the, you know, some people have commented about the filmmaking that it's not great. Um, it is low budget. And so you have to look at it in that regard. So this is a low budget film. And so I think with the use of the lack of money and stuff like that, I'm always fascinated to see how filmmakers make the magic happen, right? And so just keep that in mind, but it is horror, supernatural vibes. Um, so it's really fun. The script is, you know, it's simple and some things are predictable, but it also, it works with the story. So again, I'm not choosing this film because it's like a phenomenal film. I just think it's a really fun one, just again, to add to your movie night to definitely check out. And again, just to watch some of these films that are lower budget um, to just really see the creativity of these filmmakers. So the next one that we have is Vacation of Terror because of course we are in the month of June, people are going on vacation. So what better way uh, for us to jump right into Shudder than you know to have a horror film that's set around a vacation, a family vacation. So we have the main character, Fernando. Not really saying that correctly, probably, but that's fine. Uh, he has inherited a home from a deceased family member, and so he's taking his family. They're going on vacation, and of course, things do not go as planned at all. His daughter finds a creepy doll, and well, we know what happens when children find inanimate objects like that. So. With this director, it is a female director, and being a Spanish film itself, there is a certain kind of style, flair, spice to this film that I think makes it so unique and so fun to watch. So yes, of course, they, the family gets on this new property for this vacation, the daughter finds a doll, and of course a spirit is inhabiting it, and all chaos breaks loose. So we have this uh, spicy flair that Renee, the director, brings to it, which makes it very fun and very iconic. And don't you worry, there is a sequel to this movie, and it is on Shudder. So if you really have a lot of fun with Renee and her film, uh, you can definitely check out uh, number two on Shutter as well. The next film that I'm going to recommend is Graduation Day. We've had a bunch of people out in the world graduating from high school, from college, whatever it is. And so, of course, this is the right time to show a graduation slasher, right? We have the class of 81. They're running for their lives. Basically, you have a track star who has ended up dead and you've got a guy in a fencing mask and he's going around and he's killing people. He's killing students. He's killing teachers. It, you know, it's your typical slasher, right? And so, you know, it's not like the most creative script in the world, but it's just a really fun one to kind of bop in. Yeah, graduation, all about the thrills and the kills. Am I right? I mean, come on, let's think about Buffy, like the Buffy graduation episode. Graduations are iconic, you know? So we had to find something to fit the whole graduation vibe. Congratulations to all of you who have either graduated high school or college, whatever it is. Major congrats to you. Let's get in for the thrills and the kills. So last but not least, we have my pick number five, which is Night Watch. It is a Danish film, and this is actually a sequel. Uh, exactly 30 years ago, they came out with the first Night Watch, that this is now the second one. And there's like four out of five um, of the original players in this film as well, which is really cool. So we have this character, Emma, who is taking up a job at this night watch to basically find out more about what happens to the death of her parents almost 30 years ago and kind of immersing herself into this area. The serial killer at the time who's been in a coma, well, he gets out of the coma and what happens? Well, of course, he, he goes on a little spree, if you know what I mean. Definitely good acting, definitely good writing, and it's 
it ties very well to the first one. So if you have watched the first one and you watch this, you feel that it is very cohesive and it fits together like a little glove. While also, if you haven't seen the first one, this film does a really good job to still be able to immerse you and to give you the information that you need. You're basically not gonna be lost if you haven't watched the first one. So if you have seen it, it's really great to see some of these older actors from the first one to be in here. And it's like riding a bike for them. They just, they slipped right back into the roles and it was absolutely no problem. So definitely highly recommend thriller. Um, super suspenseful, got a lot of horror elements in there. It's definitely a must watch in my book. So this isn't, um, you know, number six, right? We are only talking about my top five Shudder favorites, but a film I do want to call out that is on Shudder is Gorgo. That was filmed in 1961. So you have this like Godzilla vibe. It's super old school, super corny and ridiculous. Uh, but if you're totally into the Godzilla vibe, especially right now with Godzilla minus one, that's now officially on Netflix. So for all of you Godzilla fans, you can go in the States, United States, you can go and check that out on Netflix. But since it's like Godzilla vibes right now, Gorgo is up there. And so that's a really fun way to get that like old school um, Godzilla stop animation. Hello, it is the theme <laughs> um, vibe taking place. It's a lot of fun. So again, maybe just add it to your circulation of your popcorn popping movie night. Uh, it's, it's a really fun watch. So that is it. I know it was short and sweet. I was just giving you like a little bit of nuggets here and there, but you know, I want you to be able to watch the films yourself. I don't want to give too much away. I can just kind of tell you what I noticed about them, what I've heard from other people to kind of just give you some recs, but Shudder is vast with the collection that it has. So if you're not into my recommendations, by all means, get on Shudder yourself and find what fits you. Like I said in the very beginning, they have curated playlists. You can dive in there and see a bunch of different kind of films for yourself and explore some of these other sub genres of horror. Horror is just not one note. There are many notes that make up the genre. So definitely have fun in exploring this awesome streaming app. And that is it for me. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like, subscribe to this channel if you are enjoying this and you love horror and you love sci-fi and you want to engage more in movie reviews, TV reviews, uh, talking about Shudder or talking about things like the horror subgenres. We're gonna be doing a lot of that kind of stuff on here. So definitely uh, subscribe and ring that bell for Cafe Crashdown uh, so you don't miss a beat. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Remember, I am Kayla here at the Crash Hub and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Yes.